What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're asking the question, do all narcissists have addictions? Are all narcissists addicted to something or someone? <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So boom, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Answering the question, do all narcissists have addictions? So first of all, this question came from someone in my support group. They say, hey Lee, can you do a video on narcissists and addictions? Do all narcissists have addictions? There's a link to the support group. It's gonna be in the description of every video and podcast that I do. It's called The Mental Healers. Check it out. Um, but yes, so me personally, as a diagnosed narcissist, I do have addictions and I, I feel like when people hear addictions, they automatically go to like alcohol or some type of illegal substance or drug or whatever, you know, but that's not going to be all true for every single narcissist. I think a lot of narcissists do have addictions, but it's not always going to be a, an addiction to something negative or something that could destroy or alter your life. You know, a lot of narcissists are going to be addicted to people, you know, or hobbies or things, you know, I truly believe that a lot of narcissists have addictive personalities. This is my, this is just factual. Just to me, this is factual because every single narcissistic person that I've dealt with in my life that I know is narcissistic, is a narcissist or is narcissistic is addicted to something. They are, they really, really are, you know, are some addict, some of those addictions more long lasting than others? Absolutely. Yes. Because if you get addicted to an illegal substance or a drug, it's harder to kick that addiction than it is to kick an addiction to uh, building, you know, axes or saws or golf or something like that, video games. Pardon the interruption, just wanted to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button right now and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any uploads. Help me reach more people. Now back to the video. It's easier to kick an addiction uh, that involves like golf or something like that than it is to kick an addiction of being addicted to like uh, some type of drug. You know, it just that's just true. Sometimes being addicted to alcohol, because alcoholism, alcoholism, I think it's a, a damn disease. So it's, it, I would just say it's easier to get to stop playing golf than it is to to, to kick the alcohol addiction, to kick, to stop being an alcoholic. You know, to, to to stop drinking as much and whatnot. So I do believe that most narcissists come with some type of addictive personality. Whether the addict the addiction is destructive is a whole different thing. Because me. I've been self-aware of myself to understand the fact that I do absolutely have an addictive personality. I really, really do. And a, a lot of my addiction, addictive personality comes from um, boredom. I think most narcissists suffer from some type of chronic boredom, right? Because so if I'm super extremely bored, then I need to find something to, to curb my boredom. So I find an addiction. Right now, y'all, my addiction is people. I'm addicted to people. I'm addicted to people. I really, really am. You know, I'm addicted to how the people's minds work. I, I, I that's just it right there. I'm actually absolutely addicted to what makes people tick. What makes a narcissist tick? What makes an empath tick? What makes somebody with borderline personality disorder, uh, ASPD, HPD? What makes them tick? So that's my addiction right there. And my addiction is also using what I learned from what, what makes people tick to help people. Now. Could I use that to destroy people? Absolutely, yes. I could absolutely use that to destroy people. If I can understand what makes people tick, I can use that to manip manipulate people on a mass scale to do bad things, right? To, get, to give them bad advice. So my addiction is not is not destructive, but it could be. You see, I'm interested in what makes people tick, what makes how the brain works, what makes the people's mind works. I've been, I've been addicted to this for a very long time, but a lot of other narcissists, get addicted to unhealthy things you know they get addicted to drugs and alcohol uh some of them get addicted to, to sex just being realistic some narcissists get addicted to sex and it's just hard it's, it's extremely hard to kick those habits this is one of the this is just one of the truths right there it's extremely hard to get, when you get addicted to one of those things it's extremely extremely hard to kick but this is my thing right here, y'all, because I think a lot of narcissists suffer from chronic boredom. I do think multiple addictions are possible. 
I do think most narcissists don't just have one addiction. They might have one main addiction, but there's like a lot of like sub addictions or mini addictions that are going on behind the scenes as well that keep this person moving. They keep this person, you know, so they don't get bored or whatever. But to me also, the addictions are a form of escapism, right? The addictions are a, a really a true form of escapism. Like the addictions, uh, they allow them to escape, especially if you get addicted to alcohol. You get addicted to alcohol because the alcohol releases the dopamine in the brain. And dopamine, the, the dopamine release that you get from alcohol or certain drugs or whatever, or the, your addiction makes you feel good. Dopamine is that feel good, yeah, it's that feel good chemical. It makes me feel good. So what I, I like feeling good, right? I like feeling good. I like be. I like. Feel, I like this feeling so much because it, it it empowers me. So I drink more and I drink more and I drink more because I like this feeling. I'm chasing this high. I'm chasing. I'm not. I'm no longer bored. I'm chasing this high. I'm addicted to this, to this feeling. But guess what? Y'all know what we're, we're drinking. Like it takes more. Like once you get used to drinking, once you build up a tolerance, it takes more to get to that same level. So guess what happens? You end up with a damn alcohol addiction. You end up with addicted to alcohol or a certain type of drug. You know, because a lot of drugs have addictive substances in them. So not only do I have an addictive personality, the drugs have an addictive sub addictive chemicals and addictive, addictive properties in them. So now I'm gonna have a drug addiction because I'm gonna have an addictive personality plus the addictive qualities of this drug. So that now, now I'm stuck. So me being self-aware of who I am, y'all, that's why I don't touch drugs because I know how my mind works. I'm like, I could easily get addicted to 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 a, a drug, <laughs> you know, a white powdery substance, you know, I could, it goes up your nose. <laughs> you were, you reverse sneeze this substance, you know, you were, you, were, you reverse sneeze instead of going at two, you go, and it makes you feel good. A certain, it makes you feel a certain type of way. I could easily get addicted to that, right? But so I don't touch it. But a lot of narcissists don't understand how their minds work, right? So that it's a form of escape. It's a form of escapism. It allows them to escape their current situation right now. It allows them to escape the moment that they're in right now. It allows them to escape, and they keep doing it over and over again because they enjoy that escape. They enjoy that dopamine, that dopamine release. So it makes them feel better about themselves. So they feel good. They feel better, and they just start acting out. You know, they start their behavior suffer from it. Suffer from it. So some of their addictions, y'all, some of their addictions can actually exacerbate the narcissistic traits and qualities. It can bring out the worst in them. They might be a low level narcissist until they start drinking and doing their alcohol or drugs or whatever. Then they turn into a malignant narcissist. Now they're beating on you. Now they're lying to you. Now they're cheating on you. Now they have a sex addiction. You see what I'm saying? Now they're a sex addict. There's so many different things that are going on in these situations that, that it, it affects people. So that's what I'm telling you. If you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, that is part of it right there. This is got a, it's a wild part of it, but it is the part of it because they, if they get addicted to something, it does release a lot of these chemicals. It does release, gives them that release, but it also releases the worst. It could also release the worst part of them. That form of escapism, that escapism actually ends up releasing the worst part of them, which actually makes them treat somebody worse. It makes them, makes them behave worse. You know, it makes them treat you worse. It makes them start yelling and screaming. And you don't, and you start not to recognize the person that you're with. You're like, I don't even recognize you anymore. Because they become a different person when they drink or when they smoke or whatever they have going on. They become an entirely different person. And again, because I know you, it sucks, right? It absolutely does suck. That's what I'm just telling you. If you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, this is part of it. This it kind of comes with the territory of dealing with this toxicity that they're going to get worse because they're going to get worse before they get better. I'll say it like that. You know, they will absolutely get worse before they get better. And because you, if you start telling them that when they get on this substance or they start drinking, they act bad, that sometimes will make them want to do it more. Cause you know, narcissists don't like being told what to do. They think they know everything. They think they know what's best for them. And they think they, they think they know what's best for everybody around them. So they keep doing it because it makes them feel good. They keep, they keep doing it because it's a form of escapism for them. So yeah, I do believe that most narcissists have addictions, but every addiction is not going to be the same, right? Like I said, every addiction is not going to be destructive to everybody around them. Every addiction is not going to make them act out of character, behave erratically and whatnot. Some addictions are worse than others. Let's be real, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, uh, uh, an addiction to throwing axes or you know playing golf or video games, 
it can affect their family in a negative way. It can affect their relationships in a negative way. I'm not saying that. It can absolutely have a negative effect on their relationships. Absolutely. You know, but as far as them getting, you know, changing their character and sort of beating on you and cheating on you, doing all kinds of crazy stuff because of their, their negative addiction, you see what I'm saying? How that balances out right there. And y'all, and I'll just be real with you, a lot of narcissists put their addictions above their family and friends. They just absolutely do this. This is one of the truths right here. They will absolutely put their addictions above their job, above their families, above their friends, because it makes them feel good to have this addiction. It makes them feel good to be able to escape certain situations. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel better, y'all. Keep it hot. Keep it like keep it hot and ready, like a little Caesar's pizza. It makes them feel good, and they like to feel good. They like to they like they want to feel good about themselves, right? So this is what happens a lot of times. So that, like say, if you have a narcissist with an addictive personality, like some addictions, some people's personalities are going to be more addictive than others. And everybody's addiction is going to be different as well. So you have to protect yourself. And like I say, if you can try to, you can't come, <laughs> it's very difficult to come between a narcissist and their chosen, their addiction of choice. So be safe, take care of yourselves and just understand y'all that is way less to do with you than you think. I, I, when I tell people the narcissists have addictions because they get bored, people automatically think I'm calling them boring. No, I'm not calling you boring, but I'm saying a lot of narcissists, all get, they, get, they do have chronic boredom. They do get bored very easily, but it has less to do with you than you think. They're not bored because they're with you. They're bored because they are themselves. They are them. They are them, <laughs> you know? So it's not as way less to do with you than you think. So don't take this personal. Like, Lee, call me boring. No, Lee did not call you boring. Don't you do that. Don't you bring the don't you bring the evil on me? Don't you talk? Don't you speak that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? You know. Meanwhile, y'all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Uh, the algorithm helps us reach more people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Hill, this is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.